Okay. Um, well, obviously, for those who didn't catch uh, my name, um, it's Stephen Hall. Um, I work for Team Kinetic. Um, in today's webinar, what we're going to be looking into is the new COVID-19 task functionality, which we've been um, developing over the last couple of months um, now. Um, so basically, it's about if your organization um, needs needs to manage volunteers, needs to manage kind of getting essential food and, and, and um essential goods to those who are self-isolating then then this is the webinar for you this is what, <laughs> this is what we're going to be talking about for those of you who are already using it like kenilworth um uh, then there's a few new features we're, we're, um, we're build, building literally one was rolled out um yesterday um so i'll mention them because it may be some things that, that you're, not, you're not aware of um if you do have any questions if you can uh, add them to the comments on the uh i think it's the right hand side the top right is it the comments add them to the comments um, section and I'll go through them at the end okay so give you a bit of background um, what we realized a couple of months ago was that the COVID crisis the kinds of opportunities that volunteers would need to get involved in to, to, to kind of deal with these um, these COVID related um, you know the, this pandemic are slightly different to the normal kind of opportunities so our normal opportunities you know they could be like helping out doing I don't know, training someone to do netball um, every Tuesday night or you're doing litter picking on a Sunday afternoon or and all the information is shared. It's all shared with, with everybody, all made public, and then people just click on it and join it and then they can turn up on the day. That's fine, but it's slightly different with the COVID stuff and we kind of realise this. Firstly, um, one of the key differences is about the information, um, the sensitive information involved in the process. So normally, if someone's going litter picking, you just tell them everything, this is where, where it is, this is where we're meeting, these, you know, this is what you need to bring. With this, it's like we've got, tell them roughly what they're doing, but we can't share things like the person's address or, uh, you know, sensitive information like that or what you know, their shopping list, what they need picking up from the shops. We can only share that with a specific volunteer who's actually said that they can do the task. So the next step, and it might seem small, but it's actually quite, it makes quite a big difference to the process. So we've built this new type of opportunity called a task. Okay. Um, now, what I'm going to do is start by taking you through three um, slides, quick slides, just to give you a, a brief overview. So the first slide here, in purpose of this is to, um, so you can see exactly how these tasks are created. So a task is like I say, you need somebody to do something, or you need somebody to go and take milk and bread to Mrs. Bloggs, who's self-isolated. That would be a task. Um, the people who can create tasks, obviously, if you have a team kinetic system, the administrators, they can do everything, and including create a task. Um, you've also got what we call providers, but essentially that's internal employees um, within your organization who you may need to create tasks, but you don't want them to be an administrator, but you still need them to be able to create and manage those tasks. And um, there may be external people. Look, we have a number of um, local authorities that are using it, and they have um, kind of community support leads who, who are located right across the city of, of, of Manchester. And these people are set up um on the system as providers which means that they can create tasks so they're looking after their kind of geographical um, region even though they don't work for the city council they're just um but they're still be able to create right okay it's street champions yeah um use different names for it yeah, absolutely right um and also down the bottom here we've got api which uh, one of you is going to be interested in um where essentially we've got um it's the ability to bring information in this particular instance it's tasks um, into from another system into the team kinetic system so you could create tasks like i say someone could go in there and actually manually create them and type them into the system or you could automatically import them from for example the nhsx system or another crm system or you know any other database that you've got running um, so that's how you can create tasks from the volunteer side it's very much self-serve from the volunteer side and those of you familiar with the system know that you know a lot of it although we allow you to take complete control of a system if you want to we also allow you to um, to allow users to do whatever they whatever they can do you know so if, if you want volunteer in this particular instance we allow volunteers to search and join a task now they've still got to be approved but they can still search and join a task and it in terms of searching, they can use, as you'd expect, um, we use mo uh, laptops or um, their mobile phone. Now, what we've realized, um, a little tip here, what we've realized is vast majority of people, these volunteers doing these COVID-19 related tasks are using mobile phones. So visually, we've very much aimed it around um, using the use of mobile phones. Um, and when they start searching for these apps, as you'll see yourselves, um, it looks very much like a prop, like a 
an actual app, a traditional app, although we're using this new technology. But I won't go into that too much, but um, just keep that in mind. You can access it using multiple devices. Um, this is the basic life cycle. So those who might have been staring at it while we were waiting for the uh, webinar to start. So the, the I say the admin creates a task. As I said, it could be a number of different people who could create the task or it might be imported in. The volunteer registers, if they haven't registered already. Um, then the volunteer searches and or joins the task. The tasks are listed in distance from where they live. So it's not as if they search far. Usually what we've experienced looking at the data is that, that, that everyone's going for the, the tasks that are nearest to them pretty much. Um, once they've joined the task, then the person who's created the task, they approve the volunteer on the task. Okay, and by approving it, that's going to share that sensitive information, like the, the, the address of the person who's self-isolated and the fact that they need foot cream delivered. It's going to share that personal information with that individual volunteer. Okay. Once they've been approved on it, then the volunteer, they get a little message, a little you know, the phone pings and tells them, okay, that's it, you've been approved. And they can then go down the shop and um, get the goods and go and deliver the goods and then mark the task as complete. They don't have to do one task at a time. I mean, as you'll see shortly, um, they can, you know, what most people tend to be doing is they go on there, they pick the five closest tasks to them, they go down the shops and they pick up shopping for five people and then they go and deliver that, deliver that shopping. So they're kind of, they're on multiple tasks at the same time. Um, what can volunteers do? Starting from um, the top right, they can join and follow tasks. So obviously, they can see which tasks uh, um, are still available to join that no one's joined them yet. They can see which tasks they've joined. They can see which ones they've approved on. They've been, they've been approved on. And finally, they can see um, which ones they've already completed. So that's really easy, um, really simple layout. Um, across to the top left, we've got show ID. So something. these are all kind of lessons we've, we've learned along the way. So what we've built into it is the ability, if if, for example, um, they're in the car and they're going down the shops and they get stopped by the police and the police ask, you know, what are they doing out and about? Is it, is it necessary? Then um, they can show the app to the police, which shows, yes, they are a volunteer and, um, you know, th 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 their ID has been checked and this is who they're doing it for and, and, and the rest of it. There's also a QR code in there. Um, for those who don't know what QR codes is, it just means that a, um, a police number, then anyone with any kind of phone, if you scan it, it will show that information back. It will reconfirm that information back. It's just a stop. You know, on the outside, the off chance that someone might take a, a screenshot and doctor the image and make it look like they've got ID when they haven't, it eliminates that because as soon as they scan the code, they'll see that the picture will be different. So it's it's a way of, of, of reinforcing and, and obviously communicating with the with the police or even the person you're delivering to that, yes, I am who I say I am and I am volunteering. I'm, I'm trying to help out. And we've also got down the um, bottom left here, we've got a message ability, ability to message um, the task creator. So if a volunteer is out there, they turn up at, at Mrs. Blog's house and they say, okay, then um, here's your bread and here's your milk and here's your foot cream. Uh, and then she says, oh, that's great. I'm, how are you doing? I'm, I'm struggling. I can't get my bins out. They've got to go out on Wednesday or something like that. Then it's the ability for the, the, the volunteer can send a message straight to the task creator and they can tell them of any kind of concerns that they may have. Then it's down to the task creator, then they can follow that up through whichever channel they feel um, necessary. Um, and finally, down here, we've got create recurring tasks. So this is one that was um, it was actually rolled out yesterday. So what we realized was a lot of these people, when they're doing the deliveries, they're turning up at the house. Here's your milk, here's your bread, here's your foot cream. And the person said, oh, could you do the same for me next week? And then they were having to go and ask for another task to get created again. Uh, or what they're often doing is leaving the task open, which is it, so it, it wasn't it wasn't um, it wasn't meeting that kind of um, that side of the spec. So what we've done is created the ability for not only for them to complete a task, but also like complete and repeat task, which means it allows the volunteer to create another task at a later date just for them with that recipient again. So at least we're we're capturing then every single time the volunteer is going and visit uh, going to visit the person. Uh, the recipient or the person who's self-isolated okay and it's all recorded and they can see exactly when they've got to turn up okay so that's the main features on the volunteer side um I'll come to that in a bit so what i'm going to do is take you straight into the system now and show you exactly how it works so if i exit out of that and jump on the system so um when you log into the system go down to manage community tasks which is this button here okay so what we've got here is Essentially, we've got four columns, okay? Unassigned tasks, applied tasks, yep. 
Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, I'm logged in as administrator here. So if you log in as, as an administrator or you log in as a provider, i.e. You're, you're just someone who needs to create tasks, you might be an employee or you might be someone who's a community support worker, you see exactly the same screen that you're seeing here. And you go down to opportunities and providers, down to manage community tasks, and you'll see what we're looking at here. Essentially, Yeah, yeah, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Yeah, for those of you who know, obviously we've been going for 12 years. This is not the only thing we've built. <laughs> we've built a fantastic volunteer management system over the last 12 years, um, which is used across the world. Um, so you've still got access to all that stuff, but one of the new functions we've built in there specifically for the COVID-19 is this Manage Community Tasks page. Because as I said at the start, it's a slightly different type of opportunity to your normal opportunities. So um, we've got these four columns. Basically, what the person who's creating a task is trying to do is move them from left to right. Okay, so what we're going to do is create a task now and show you exactly how it works. So if I click on the plus button there, which is always a good place to start, isn't it? The plus button. When you're creating a task, um, it's split into three areas. So we've got private data here. We've got data shown to assigned volunteers. So this is sensitive information. This box down here. And on the right hand side, we've got um, pub like public face and data. So this is what's visible to anybody who's going and looking at the tasks. So um, if I put in a task name here, say uh, liver, milk, and bread. Now, it automatically starts showing, you probably saw it before, it starts showing previously entered task names. So if you're doing the same kind of task names again and again, you don't have to type out every time. Then select the category. What the category does really is um, volunteers can filter by category um, their tasks. Um, that's one of the one of the, the key purposes of it, and also changes the icon on the search page. Then you select who it's for, who the task creator is. Um, then we've got some other options. I won't go into them too much, but these are ways of restricting the task. So you can restrict them to maybe only volunteers who have a criminal uh, record um, recorded within the system and authorized within the system. Then it only let those volunteers see it. Or the ID check says, okay, then it's don't show this to every volunteer. Only volunteers that have uploaded their ID and I've approved their ID. I've seen their passport and it matches the details that they're registered with. So I'm guessing that person is going to be who they say they are. Um, so you, there is some restrictions in there. We can restrict it to particular groups of volunteers as well if you wanted to using this option. So um, but I'll leave it nice and simple to start with. Um, the private data. This private data section, this is for your eyes only or the task creator's eyes only. Okay, so um, you don't have to use it. It's only the red fields are mandatory. But um, for the ID, for example, this is usually used for some a way to reconcile the task that you're seeing on the system back to the original paperwork. So say if I'm looking at a task on the system, I, there's usually what we call a unique identifier, which is some way you could uniquely identify that task. So when you're looking at it, you're saying, well, where did I get this from? Where, where did I, where's, what's the source of this, this task? You can go back to the spreadsheet and you can say that's definitely where it's come from. So it might be a national insurance number or something like that. It could be anything you want, really. And this bottom section down here, this is the sensitive data section. Okay, so we've got the recipient's name. This is Blogs, who's been very busy. She's a very needy person. And um, the telephone number in there. Set the postcode. Um, come to your postcode there for you. And put in an address. And then you put it in the notes for assigned volunteer. This is where you can put in whether it's the shopping list or anything else that you need to put in there. So I'll say um, deliver milk and milk, milk and bread. Oh, and add new task. I'm going to add new task. It's going to add it to the, the button there. Boom. Adds it up here into the unassigned tasks column here. Okay. So I could, at this stage, I could assign that straight to a volunteer. This is why I say we, throughout the system, you'll probably see that we allow either the users to do some things themselves, or if you prefer, you can say, no, actually, I want a full control over it. So same kind of thing here. We've created a task. If I wanted to, I could click on assign. I could type in a volunteer's name and automatically assign it to a volunteer. Or I can leave it on the search page and wait for a volunteer to join it. So we're going to do the last. Yeah, sure.
Ja, na polu mnie. Yeah, that's no, a fair point. It's a good point to make. Um, okay, so uh, we've created a task. It's in the unassigned task. Like I say, I could assign it or I could wait for a volunteer to join it. So what I'm going to do is go for the latter. Let's wait. Let's look from a volunteer's perspective. So this is the volunteer's view here. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to log out and log back in again just so you can see the full process. So the volunteer, this is their mobile phone here. I click on as they log in. Done. Click on sign in. Obviously, it's going to show your the organization's logo there instead of ours. Um, and that's it. And as you can see, you've got four columns here, exactly the same columns that you saw when you're creating the task. So in the search column here, it says deliver milk and bread. Click on um, the task. It shows me roughly where it is. It says, yes, I can help. Click on that. By clicking on that, it says brilliant. It's now moved it from the normal, like new tasks over to applied. So it's now in the applied, but it's not going to share any sensitive information with me yet because I haven't been approved on the task. So if we jump back to the uh, this page here, you can now see it's in the applied task column. So from here, I can say, okay, then I'm going to approve it if I'm happy. I could reject them if I didn't think Margaret Pugh was the right person, but I'm going to say, no, I'm happy. I'm going to approve them. That's going to message or a little ping is going to appear on Margaret Pugh's phone. And again, we've got to Margaret Pugh. It's moved it from applied over to assigned here. So now when I click on assigned, I can see deliver milk and bread. But this time, when we go into the task, this time we can see the address of the person here, okay, and we can see the other sensitive information. Okay. Now I could send a message back um, to the task creator, oh, the person's not in or they're not answering the door or anything I want at this stage. Or I could say, okay, then I'm happy with that. I've, I've delivered it. They're happy. I'm going to complete this task. So click on complete task. And then it moves it across from assigned into completed. Can see here okay and when I go back to the other view you'll see again once I refresh the page it refreshes automatically every 30 seconds but save me waiting refresh the page and it moves across into this completed column here now any stage join here I can always click on the task it's going to bring up and show me the information and I can edit the information if I want to um, I could copy the task if I wanted to um, but that's the basic process Okay. Now, other things um, which I'm going to mention now are, so the ID side of things. So imagine that I'm out there delivering this milk and bread and I get stopped by the policeman or, or Mrs. Blog says, oh, I don't know who you are. Can you show me some ID, please? Then I can go onto here, click on my little options button, go down to ID card, and that's it. And it shows my ID. It shows that my ID has been verified. I haven't got DBS clearance yet. Um, and I've got a little QR code and my photo on there. Okay. That's the ID. This is the filtering options. So I mentioned before about if you said I am only, only interested in deliveries, then you just untick these options and it only see deliveries in the search on the, on the right hand side. Okay. Um, 
So what I'm going to do now is do one final uh, run through, but this time I'm going to quickly show you um, complete and repeat. Well, actually, I could probably show you using the existing one. So what I said before is remember when you go into what we're finding is people were doing deliveries and then they were saying, oh, can you do the same for me next week? And we want to encourage that, that rapport, that kind of um, that relationship between the, vol the volunteer and the person who's self-isolating. You know, um, it's a good thing to, to keep going. So rather than um, with what we're doing is created this extra button which allows them to automatically create another task for the following week which is automatically assigned to them as a volunteer so to do that we click on the task wrong one there sorry um, rather than um, complete I'm looking on the wrong view I need to go back to the volunteers view so look at the task here okay go on to my completed tasks click on that deliver milk and bread and there's an option there for repeat this task so when, by repeating this task, this says, okay, well, what date do you need to repeat it on? So oh, the same time next week, which is what it defaults to. Add repeat task. And that's automatically created a task now. That completed task is still in there, but under, under the completed column, but under the assigned column, it's sat there now waiting for, till for next week. See the dates change. Next week waiting for me to go in um, and do that delivery again. Okay. Um, so that's uh, that's the basic form. I don't want to go into any more detail than, um, than that to start with. Um, if you are interested and you're not an existing uh, customer of ours, you are interested in testing this out, then um, please feel free to go to uh, teamkinetic.co.uk. And as um, you're probably aware, you can spin up a site for free um, and you'll be able to play around with that functionality. You need to switch it on. By default, something um, I didn't mention before. So when you... When you, when you go to the teamkinetic.co.uk and it will create a system for you, it's like three or four questions and it will spin you up a system automatically with all the functionality that you might use, not just the COVID stuff. Um, but you can turn on that COVID functionality that I've demoed today um, just by following those three steps there, just basically within the, the, the options. Um, so yes, please feel free to go and do that. Now I'm going to open up and go through some questions now. So uh, yeah, of course you can, yeah. We get, yeah, we, we get quite a lot of it, quite a lot of interest because I think people are realizing they don't want to just have a system that just works for COVID. They want a system where they, they can use their volunteers afterwards. So what what this allows you to do is create um, create the ability to manage all these COVID nineteen related tasks and getting these deliveries done. But at the end of it, you've still got all those volunteers on the same system, used to logging in the same way, and you can utilize them um, on on ongoing volunteering. You know, on the on the year years following uh, obviously the, the epidemic and um, so that's yeah that seems to be one of the key key things that people are really um, really engaged and really uh, really happy about so yep uh, do you want to read them out and then I'll answer them Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, so originally, what we've got at the moment is a team, uh, a team kinetic app that you can download. OK, so this is for the system, we even put all the COVID stuff aside just for our system to get hold of any opportunities. We've got a team kinetic app. And what happens is when you download that individual like, team kinetic app and the volunteer um, logs in, then we know, OK, they're part of this system here and we show your logo and we show them the opportunities because they belong to your system. Um, now if um that's fine there's no issues with that but obviously um it, it doesn't allow you to do to, to actually register so what we've developed what's going to be coming out in the next couple of months is the ability to have your own app per organization obviously this is a bit more work and there's a bit of cost involved with it because we have to run it through the app stores the ios app store and the android app stores um but it's basically uh, it'll be your own um you know your own app so you could type in whatever it is myorganization.com and you can put that into Type that into the um, app store and it will bring up your app and you'll be able to download it and it will allow volunteers to to register via your app we can't do that because we've only got one central app but once we roll this out it's going to allow you all to have your own individual apps which means you can also register and do all your volunteering management through the app
Yeah, that's a fair point. So like, like, yeah, going back to, that's a, that's a good point to mention. So going back to what we realized was because the vast, virtually all the volunteering that was going on was all based around COVID-19, uh, COVID we said, okay, then let's not clutter things up. Let's keep it really simple for them. So the search page they see just gives them the functionality they're going to need to deal with this um, COVID-19, um, you know, type, type of volunteering. So we developed this page, a nice clean page, really suit, uh, well suited using this new technology to, um, uh, to mobile phones. And it just shows the functionality they're going to need to do this COVID-19 related um, volunteering. So that's why it's two separate uh, search pages. But um, you don't have to worry about that too much. Um, any other questions? <clears throat> Um, say, say that again, read that again, Chris. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Um, that's the only way they would see the other tasks is for them to be admins. I mean, essentially, you're saying that you, you know a provider could be ex external support worker, um, you know, looking after their local area, uh, and you don't expect them to be able to see their their own task information. I mean, the sensitive information on there. So, so the only way you do that is it, the only person who can see across all tasks from all providers is the administrator. That's the next level up in the hierarchy. So, yes, they have to be added on there as administrators. They have to be ad. They have to be admins. Yeah. 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 You can specify which providers. Like, for, for, uh, I don't go into this too much because people in here obviously don't haven't used our system for years. But you can spe uh, specify which providers. So imagine a provider is someone who needs to create opportunities or create tasks, and they might be internal people to your organization. There might be external support um, support workers, as I mentioned before. Now you can specify which ones can create tasks. So you, that ability is in there. Doesn't have to. It's not just every everyone can create tasks. Is there any no, no. Okay. Well. Uh... <laughs> Um, you, you can read, assuming the, the blog's been released, um, on teamkinetic.co.uk forward slash blog. Um, so you, if you go to our web page, uh, so if you wanted to start up a system and test this out, you'd just start a new trial, obviously, and make sure you switch on the functionality and the options, the COVID fun functionality and the options. Um, you've also got our blog up here. If you click on the blog. And there's always loads of fresh information on here. There you go, COVID task app lock. The marketing team are on it. They're on it. Um, so that takes you through it all there and even shows you um, how to actually turn on the COVID task uh, functionality. And got new push notifications. That's something else uh, someone was asking about. Um, those of you who probably work with us know how quick we develop these things. <laughs> someone mentioned it last week. It's in there now, push notifications. So um, when new tasks are added or people are approved, as long as the app is as long as the the app is open on their phone it will automatically ping okay so they know they get a notification they don't have to keep looking at it all the time um password reset functionality photo uploads uh, obviously they can upload the photo via the via the app as well and that can be authorized and checked qr codes i'll mention that now so they, this id card which is also in the app so they can show it to people and repeated tasks which, which i mentioned i think that's um yeah yeah that's that's i think i covered pretty much everything there yeah, yeah, don't worry too much about that. Okay, um, any other questions?
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like I say, go on the website if, you, if you're not with us already. Download the trial, get a free trial, and um, yeah, have a play around with it because I think you'll be impressed. So uh, I'm certainly impressed with it. What we managed to do in such a short space of time. <laughs> Thanks a lot for you for listening, and um, stay safe. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for that, Steve. I'll um, hopefully speak to you later in the week. Yeah. 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 No, but it's an it's an offer, isn't it? It's a tool. Yeah, I'd spoken with Steve earlier in the week about um, some of the issues in Torvine, but yeah, they're ongoing conversations. So hopefully, I'll um, I'll come back to yourselves later this week and have, have another discussion. Yeah, thank you for that. Though. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Hello. Yeah, sorry. I had my mic muted. I couldn't I couldn't work out how to turn it back on. Sorry. <laughs>